Okay, friends, festive pomegranate salsa with baked tortilla chips. That sounds pretty fun to me. This is an easy recipe, but it is really, really festive. It's so pretty. The salsa is so pretty and so colorful that it's one of these things, if you're having people over and you want to kind of wow them with something that's simple but beautiful and healthy, this is definitely the thing to do. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start by actually making our baked tortilla chips, which I know you can buy tortilla chips in the store, but if you've never made them, you should think about it because it's really easy. Um, when you make them yourself, you have a little bit more control over how much oil is in them. So I don't know, give it a shot. I'm going to show you how in case you're interested. It's very, very simple. First thing is you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And then you want to take your baking sheet and line it with some parchment paper or that's what I usually use. You can use foil if you want to. You don't have to line it if you don't want to. You can put a little oil or pan spray on it, but parchment for me works pretty well. And then um, we're just going to start with just standard corn tortillas. These are store-bought tortillas, nothing special. And what we're going to do is I've got a mixture here of two tablespoons of olive oil and I put in a little bit of lime juice. I put like a teaspoon of lime juice in there. That's optional I would say, but I kind of liked the flavor of it on the chips, but if you don't want to, you can leave it out. And then you're going to take your pastry brush, or in my case, a clean paint brush. I like the shape and how they work a little bit better. And you're just going to brush your tortilla with a little oil and we're just going to do these in a stack and that way we can cut them all at the same time. So again we're just brushing lightly. Now by doing this you know instead of frying if you've ever made them at home by frying you do use a lot more oil and when, you'll be surprised when you do these and you bake them you'll be surprised that you really don't need nearly as much. I mean I've got two tablespoons in this bowl but trust me I'm not going to use all of it. Um, and I'm using olive oil. You can use a different, if you just want to use a plain vegetable oil, if you don't like the flavor of olive. I think I'm just so used to using it in so many recipes, it's kind of my go-to, but you can use any one you want to. So we're just going to stack them up. I think that's enough. I think you get the idea. I've got about six of them there. And then what we're going to do is then just cut through the entire stack. You can cut these any way you want to. I usually cut them into six pieces. So I cut them in half and then like that. That seems to be about the right size to me. You gotta need a nice sharp knife, heavy knife for that. All right, that's pretty simple. Make sure you cut it all the way through. I'm not sure if I did there. And then we're just gonna lay these out on the baking sheet and again if you if you want to put other seasonings i know some people will they might put some chili powder on there or they might put some cumin on there there's all kinds of things that you can do if you want to i just try to keep this pretty simple and i'm just all i'm going to do with these is i'm just going to sprinkle these with a little bit of salt which again is optional if you don't want the salt or you like them unsalted you can do that i'm just going to put a little bit I'm going to do this very quickly so that we can get to our salsa because I think you get the idea. And these are going to go into our preheated 350 degree oven. They take a, really just about 15 minutes and I didn't have to turn the baking sheet or do anything to it, but keep an eye on them. Like, you know, after about seven, eight minutes, take a look. If it looks like one side's getting more brown than the other, then by all means, you know, turn your baking sheet around. All right, so I'm gonna pop these in the oven. I'm gonna come right back so we can make the salsa. All right, cool. So we'll get that out of the way, get my knife here, get rid of these. All right, so I told you that we are making pomegranate salsa. And, you know, one of the things about pomegranates is they're a little tricky when it comes to opening them and trying to get the seeds out. But, and I know I showed you this once before, but I'm going to show you again because some of you may not have seen it. I'm going to show you a really easy way to get the seeds out of your pomegranate. And the other thing is, I was going to say, is that if you had been watching regularly, um, you may remember that back, I, don't know, I guess it was back in the spring, um, I filmed one of our introductions from my pomegranate tree. I was in front of my pomegranate tree and I showed you the beautiful blossoms. They're really, really deep orange red blossom. 
Well, the pomegranates have fruited now. Um, it's November, and so they are ready to go. So these are these three are from my tree. Actually, these four, I think, are from my tree. These are the um, ones I got in the store. They're a lot bigger, as you can see, but who cares? Uh, <laughs> but these are still, they're beautiful. And one thing that if you ever grow these at home, one thing you may notice is that when they get really ripe, what happens is they actually start to split a little bit. You'll see the split here on the top. And I kind of like that they do that because when, when they do that, you know that they're ripe. It doesn't split all the way down to expose the fruit itself. It's just this husk. And so then you know, okay, it's actually really, really ready. Now you won't seem like that in the grocery store, of course, but it's kind of cool that nature just tells you, you know, it's ready, ready to go. All right, so let me show you, just uh, in case you're interested, if you, are, if you come across a pomegranate and you want to get the seeds or the arils, A-R-I-L-S is what they're called, the little seeds inside. If you want to get the arils out and you want to do it quickly and easily, I'm going to show you one way to do it. Step one, wear dark colors because, um, you know, it's messy. Now, what you can do, you could, sometimes you can just break this open with your hands, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut this, at least make a cut so I can start to break it open. And the way that you do this is you actually open this up under water and you just start breaking this whole pomegranate fruit up. It takes a little bit of elbow. Maybe I'm going to cut this one more time breaking it up under water. And what that does, if you've never really looked at the anatomy of a pomegranate, you have these the seeds inside, those arils that you have, and then you have these this white, this very lightweight kind of membrane in between the seeds that you have to get out. And then you also have this other spongy stuff that's that's like what they call the pith, P-I-T-H, or it's, I think sometimes they call it the albedo. It's got a lot of different names. So you've got these different parts. So you've got this kind of thick spongy part that you can just set aside, and then you've got this stuff that's just kind of a thin little membrane. You want to get those out as much as you can, but if you do this underwater, what's going to happen is your arrows or your seeds are going to sink to the bottom and then everything else is going to float. And so that makes it actually really easy because then what you can do is you can just skim off the top of the water all the stuff that you don't want, all the, the white spongy part and all of this membrane. And then all your seeds, if you can see, the seeds have gone to the bottom. So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can see, so it's pretty easy. I can just sort of take this white stuff out and just scrape it off with my hands, which makes it pretty simple. And you can see that all the pomegranate seeds now are in the bottom. And if I had done that with the whole fruit, I would have had all my seeds at the bottom. And obviously, if I were next to my sink, the easier way to do this would be just to pour this into a strainer. But see, uh, so there we go. We've got these beautiful, and they are, they're just like little jewels. They're so pretty. And that's the reason I wanted to put them into this salsa. Okay, so all right, so that's enough, enough pomegranate anatomy, but you get the idea. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these arils. If you had um, done an entire pomegranate, you would have been left with about maybe three quarters of a cup of seeds. And I'm telling you that because you may decide that you want to just purchase the seeds from the grocery store. And that's fine too. You can do that. You can find them already, you know, just the seeds themselves in a package and they're they're really con very convenient you can also find them sometimes in the freezer i don't think frankly they're as good but they because they tend to lose a little bit of their crunchy texture when they're frozen but by all means if that's what's available to you go for it because there's so many other things that are going on in this salsa that it should be fine but we're going to start with the arils or the seeds from our one pomegranate and that as i said i got about three quarters of a cup of seeds and then we're gonna put in um, one avocado that I've cubed up. And the only thing I would tell you about the avocado is that you know normally when we look for avocados in the store, if you're like me, you know, you're, when you squeeze an avocado, you should kind of take it by the fattest end and just kind of squeeze it with your palm, not don't dig into it with your thumb. And usually we're looking for them pretty soft, right? If we wanna eat them right away and we wanna make guacamole or whatever. For this one, I would say, look for an avocado that's a little still on the firm side so that when you toss this 
you still have nice cubes of avocado so that it doesn't just kind of fall apart. That, that would be ideal, not, not critical, but ideal. All right, then I'm putting in about a quarter of a cup of diced red onion. You can already see the color here is gonna be pretty amazing. The next thing I'm adding is one and a half cups of corn kernels. And this may surprise you, but this is canned corn. I don't really have a problem with using canned vegetables in certain instances, and this is one of those instances. And the reason is that canned vegetables, like frozen vegetables, are usually processed very quickly after they're picked, and they're usually picked at their peak of ripeness. And so the nutrition is actually preserved. I know that canned vegetables and frozen vegetables kind of get a bad reputation, but they shouldn't. Um, I'm using no salt added. It's just, just straight corn kernels. Some people will use frozen corn kernels in this recipe and let them thaw out. I prefer the can, frankly, because I think it preserves the texture. They're actually nice and crunchy. They're beautiful. You can see the yellow color in there is just gorgeous. Um, super convenient. Of course, for us, it's fall, so we don't, you know, corn season is over. So um, why not? So don't be afraid. You know, canned, canned corn is great. I'm putting in some canned beans, which I use all the time. Canned tomatoes. There's lots of things that come in cans that are good and healthy and convenient. So don't be afraid. Um, so speaking of canned, this is a 15 ounce can of black beans that I've rinsed and drained. Actually, same uh, amount of ounces on the corn, by the way. It was a 15 ounce can that I rinsed and drained and 15 ounce can of the black beans. You could use other beans, but we're really going for a lot of contrast here, right? In terms of color, which is a lot of fun. Then I'm adding one jalapeno pepper. Now this I would say is optional. If you, if, if you just don't do heat, then you know leave it out that's fine you can do that but it adds a pretty color by the way this is a jalapeno pepper um, here if you are living someplace else you know, there's so many different types of peppers but they're pretty small they're pretty hot and when you cut into it like you do with other peppers what you'll find is there's that membrane inside of the pepper let me cut it open so you can see it and the seeds are generally attached to that membrane so when you prepare your pepper to so that you get rid of some of that heat if it's too much for you is make sure that not only do you remove the seeds but you also get that membrane removed as well that's important because that's actually where a lot of the heat that's called capsaicin and that's the compound actually that's going up into my nose at the moment um, but that'll get rid of some of that heat and then dice that up i'm going to put that in the water so it doesn't bother me anymore and then I have a quarter of a cup of chopped cilantro. Now I know cilantro is, as I've said before, kind of polarizing. Um, people seem to either love it or hate it. If you're on the hate side, don't worry, just leave it out. It's fine. Um, we've got other green things in there, so I think you're good there. All right, and then just to add a little bit more flavor to our salsa, I'm going to put in just a little bit of oil. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. And that's just gonna help, you know, what, what oil does, aside from just adding texture, is a lot of the compounds that you have in, um, in plant foods, and, and particularly in spices, are fat soluble. And so when I add this teaspoon of ground cumin, for example, what that's doing is that some of those compounds are actually dissolving in the oil and so it just makes it a little bit more flavorful and you'll notice it if you ever do a recipe and you just leave out the oil uh, <clears throat> you know you you can tell that it's that there's just something not quite not quite there as i say it's optional but i think it makes a difference and in this huge bowl to have a tablespoon of oil is not a huge deal all right <clears throat> two tablespoons of lime juice boy that pepper's getting to me two tablespoons of lime juice and about a half a teaspoon of salt. And that's it. And this is just, I mean, look at this. <laughs> it's just, it just makes me so happy to look at this, um, this beautiful, beautiful, colorful salsa. It's, now it, you know, did you need the pomegranate? Maybe not, but isn't it just so pretty with this, the green and the yellow and the black beans? Um, I mean, this is really, you know, when they say something is a feast for your eyes, this is, this, this is truly it. This is gorgeous. All right, and so you can see that went together really, really quickly. The hardest part is getting those arrows out of the pomegranate. 
but that's pretty much it. All right, let's see how our chips are. I'm gonna go get those and pull those out, and we're gonna plate this up. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> now, when I did these this morning, um, I had both yellow corn chips and I had white corn chips, and so that's the reason they're two different colors. But what I want you to see is that these are really crisp, <clears throat> just like the ones that you get in the store. Um, what you will notice if you make these at home is that when you bake them, if you eat them right out of the oven, they may not be totally crispy, but as they cool, then they get crisp. I mean, this is as crispy as anything you get in the store. So good. All right, and so to plate them up, we're just going to put our tortilla chips on the plate. I can hardly wait. Um, and I wish that I had people coming over that I could share this with. But the fact that I don't just means more for me, more for my husband. It also means, though, that I can put this in the fridge and store it because this is something that will keep pretty well in the refrigerator for several days. Nothing's really going to happen to it. Um, the avocado shouldn't really turn color too much because <clears throat> we've got the lime juice in there and that, um, that vitamin C that's in the lime juice is going to help keep that avocado from browning. So should work great. And look at how much we have. <clears throat> We've got tons here. This is just such a fun thing <clears throat> to make and to put out <clears throat> when, as I said, I'm making such a mess, such a fun thing to put out when you have people coming over. It just, <clears throat> they, they look at it and they say, oh my gosh, that's just so beautiful. So <clears throat> there you have it. <clears throat> I'm going to try just a little bit on one of my chips and I'm probably going to make a mess. But the flavors are so good together. Mm. What you pick up primarily is what you'd expect. You pick up mostly the lime juice, the cumin, the salt is really, it's seasoning up the avocado, the corn, the beans, and then all of a sudden <clears throat> you get this little burst of tart from the pomegranate arrow, which is pretty amazing. Um, this is just so much fun, so delicious. The other thing you could do with this, by the way, if you don't want to serve it like this with the chips, is um, this is really delicious served alongside some grilled ch chicken or some grilled fish. It's really, really good. Again, it really dresses up your plate because it's so pretty and it's so colorful. Not to mention the fact that there is so much nutrition that's packed into this. We've got all those beautiful colors. We always talk about eating lots of colorful fruits and vegetables. We got it right here. Don't go away because I'll be right back. I'm going to tell you about all the nutrition information in our festive pomegranate salsa with baked chips. Don't go away. I'll be right back.